thin are you? How healthy are you? How strong are you? And what can you do versus what do you want to do? And it's a question I ask myself every day. I have this great picture of the Eiffel Tower in my house for a reason. Because I've been there several times and if you haven't been there, can I make a really strong suggestion? Don't take the lift, take the stairs. It's a long way, they're tough stairs, but when you go to Paris, there's usually a big long line of people waiting to get up the Eiffel Tower. But if you take the stairs, not really. And why am I sharing that with you? Because if you stay really fit and if you're really healthy and if you're really strong, is it possible you can go and do everything that you wanna do? The reverse of that, if you're not fit, if you're not strong, if you're not healthy, what would your limitations be? And one of the things I always ask when it comes to the human body, and it's an interesting, just an interesting question, uh, would you ever miss brushing your teeth? As in, would you stop brushing your teeth for a period of time? How would your mouth feel, how would your whole body feel really, if you didn't brush your teeth for a week or two weeks or three weeks or a month, let's go for a month, no brushing your teeth for a whole month? How would you feel? Now, I hope you've, you can't tell me that because I hope you've never done that. I certainly haven't. Uh, but can you imagine what it would be like, how you would feel, how your mouth would feel if you haven't looked after it, if you haven't maintained it, if you haven't cleaned it, if you haven't freshened it up for a month, for four weeks? What about if you hadn't had a shower, hadn't had a bathe, <laughs> hadn't uh, cleaned your body for a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks? Now, if you've ever been out in the bush or you've been in the army or you've had something to do with the wild outdoors, you might have had that experience where you've gone a very long time without having a bath or a shower. And if you have, how did that feel <laughs> to go such a long time being dirty? So now let's combine the two, dirty teeth, dirty body for a whole month. How would you feel? And then after you did have a shower and brush your teeth, how would that feel? Well, the reason I'm asking the question is a lot of people share with me that uh, over Christmas or if I'm busy or if I'm stressed or if life catches up with me, I'm not going to exercise. If I'm on holidays in an amazing place like Paris, uh, I'm too, too busy sightseeing to, to exercise. Some people uh, walk more when they're, exercise, sorry, when they're on holiday, so they call that exercise. The challenge with that, of course, is that walking is a great experience. It's good for your headspace and you get fresh air and sunshine. But to get really fit and to get really strong, you have to overload your heart and lungs. You have to get puffed and you have to lift heavy, which is why climbing the Eiffel Tower is really good because you're going to get puffed. But if you're just wandering around the shops, wandering on the beach, wandering around sightseeing, it's a lovely activity, but it's got nothing to do with keeping your body really fit and keeping your body really strong. Now, why does that matter? I'm going to ask another question. Let's say you didn't brush your teeth, you didn't have a shower, and now you had to lie in a hospital bed for a month. So four weeks lying down, no brushing your teeth, no having a shower. How would that feel? Physically for your body, how would that feel? Well, I really want to ask you to consider, please, because it seems that we would never stop eating, we would never stop brushing our teeth, we would never stop having a shower, we would never stop eating food, we would never stop breathing. But it seems that we look for every opportunity not to exercise, not to do high intense activity. And of course, the challenge with that, if you've ever been in a hospital bed for even one week, how do you feel after lying down still for a week, how do you feel when you get up? Whoa, uh, wobbly, uh, weak, tired, even dizzy. Because of course the human body is not meant to lie down. But why do we feel so weak and tired and dizzy after being stationary for a week, let alone two weeks or a month? Well, of course, if you do nothing, your body wastes away. And I'm going to make it sound really harsh. Is it possible that our body rots away? As in, if you're not growing, you're rotting. Yuck. <laughs> and I'm sharing that for a reason because I can't understand why so many people think it's really awesome or, or normal or okay or acceptable to not move their body for three, four weeks at a time. Now, I'm not. this is not a judgment. It's a, a personal challenge for all of us because if we remain stationary, uh, and I'll use the hospital example, if we remain still for just four weeks, uh, and even if it's only two weeks or one week, but if it's four weeks, and so I'll use the long period first, we will lose around about, and depending on your metabolism and depending on how active you were before you had to lie down, but you can lose around about a kilogram of muscle. Now that's the aging of 10 years. 
in four weeks of doing nothing, your body can become a whole 10 years older, weaker, more frail. I hate that word frail because to me that just is linked with old people. And chronologically old, of course, is not a challenge. But if you get weak and old and can't do and your body wastes away, rots away, what does that do for the rest of your life? Uh, is it possible that over Christmas, for example, if you have three, four weeks holiday and you don't do any exercise and you eat a whole stack of food and you drink a whole heap of alcohol, that you can come back after your holiday and your body is really a mess? Now you've got to recover from that mess, so you have to fix the mess that you made and then you have to, uh, and for me it's about consistently, regularly getting fitter and stronger and healthier as you get older. Now I'll, I'll take all of that away. If you're on holidays, would you still brush your teeth or do you still brush your teeth? Do you still have a shower? Do you still eat food? Do you still wear clothes? Do you still breathe air? Of course, they're all normal parts of life. So why is it that it seems so normal, so acceptable to just drop the exercise as if it's not important? And the reason I'm so passionate about this is we've got kids now in our world who are growing up with old people's diseases, osteoporosis, type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, and I'm talking about bones that have wasted away, osteopenia muscles that have wasted away, uh, the high blood sugar levels because of uh, eating too much sugar, too much food, too much junk food, food that doesn't give them nutritional value and they're not burning that off. So we've got little kids with old people's diseases because they've become inactive. Now there's the challenge, isn't it? Inactivity. The top medical professionals in the world will share with us that inactivity is the new smoking. Not moving, being still is the biggest uh, killer in the world now because when you do nothing, your body wastes away, it rots away. Now let's put that into just some simple perspective. If you don't do anything for a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, yes, your muscles waste away, yes, your bones waste away, that means your metabolism slows down. So not only will you be eating more, drinking more, so putting more energy in, your body burns up less energy and you're not moving. So normally if you're exercising, you'll be burning calories faster. Uh, if you have a, a, a strong metabolism because you've got a large amount of muscle tissue, tissue or, or bone mineral density, your body works at, at peak performance and it burns up everything you put into it. But if you do nothing <laughs> and you eat a lot and you drink a lot and your muscles are wasting away, what's going to happen? Can you see why I have things like this in my house? Pictures of activity. Every time I walk past this picture of the Eiffel Tower, it reminds me of getting really puffed climbing the stairs at the Eiffel Tower. I live in an area where there's mountains everywhere, which makes me always focus on how can I move more? How can I get puffed? How can I stay fit for the rest of my life? I'm sharing all of that with you because I want our kids to grow up in a world where it's normal to be healthy, to be fit and to be strong. And I'll rephrase, what about if our kids, when we teach them to brush their teeth, because we always do that, don't we? We would never not brush our teeth. How do you feel if you don't brush your teeth for a week? Well, why don't we teach them to exercise at the same time? Uh, we teach our kids to wear clothes. Why don't we teach them at the same time that you're going to put clothes on your body? Let's do some exercise. We, our, our kids eat food. We're really, as parents, I imagine, very focused on our kids getting great food or making sure that they don't starve. But if our body's not exercising, it's almost worse than starving because everything that keeps us fit and strong and healthy and mentally strong and tough comes from being active human beings. Now, it's not about the physical activity. Of course, physical activity makes life fantastic because you can go and do all the things. You can climb mountains and do rock climbing and ride a bike and go swimming and climb the Eiffel Tower and do all sorts of stuff. But to get fit, you've got to get puffed. To get strong, you've got to overload your muscles. So it's not just about moving or being active. It's about getting high intense activity, sprinting, going as hard as you can and getting puffed so that you get really fit. And that's what stair climbing is all about. That's what punching a bag is all about. That's what jump squats are all about. That's what sprinting on a bike, going as hard as you can. Get puffed. And I'll ask the question, when was the last time you brushed your teeth? When was the last time you had something to eat? When was the last time you had a shower? Versus when was the last time you got puffed? And puffing keeps you fit, which means you can do everything else in your life so much better. 
When was the last time you overloaded every single muscle, bone, ligament, joint and tendon in your body? If you're really strong, then you can sprint even harder so you can get fitter. So strong people can get fitter. Strong people can do more stuff. Strong people have faster metabolisms. Strong people have stronger brains. Because if you are overloading your muscles and you're overloading your heart and lungs, you're pumping happy drugs into your brain so you get a brain that thinks more clearly, it's more creative. You want to go and do more things because you've got more energy. Isn't it interesting how energy creates energy? Energy creates energy. Energy creates energy. I'm so passionate about this and I wish the whole world was. We're so focused on, yes, our kids have got to be brushing their teeth, they've got to eat food, they've got to wear clothes, they've got to go to school, they've got to get educated, but what about exercise? And how will they know how awesome it is to be healthy, fit and strong if the adults in their life aren't? If you're not getting puffed on a regular basis, if you don't have strong muscles and bones, how will our kids know that it's important? Isn't it interesting that if you don't brush your teeth, which I'm sure you do, how could you convince your kids that it was important? Uh, how can we convince our kids it's important to eat healthy food if we're not? How can we convince our kids it's important to exercise if we don't? But how about rather than talk to them about what they should do, what if we are the living, breathing example of energy, enthusiasm, excitement for life, passion for life because we are healthy, fit, strong human beings? Wouldn't that be the best example for our kids? So I wouldn't miss my brushing my teeth. How about you? I always have a shower. How about you? Always eat food. Love it. How about you? Love to go and do amazing things in the world. How about you? But do you need a fit, strong, healthy body to do it? Now, I'm an old lady now. I've been exercising every day of my life since I was 10 years of age. I wouldn't miss it. In fact, sometimes I say to people, if I had to choose between brushing my teeth and exercising, I think I would choose exercise because when you've got strong bones, your teeth are part of your skeletal system. So you're more likely to have stronger teeth if you've got stronger bones. Is it important to be healthy from the inside and could that shine on the outside? So whether you're focused on having a beautiful body, ripped abdominals, tight butt cheeks and, and beautiful arms, or if you're like me and you're an old lady and you just want to be healthy, fit and strong and be active and be able to go and do all the things that you want to do for the rest of your, the rest of your life, could it be really important to get puffed, lift heavy, drink water, eat yummy food, eat food that's going to give us high performance and eat for pleasure so we've got a healthy brain and then we can go and do all the amazing things that the world has to offer. Wouldn't that be awesome? Woohoo!